what we want to show you are some of the experiences that can happen when you bring all these devices into the home. And so just let me kind of introduce some of the devices before I go to the demo. Uh, so first we have here a, a door lock made by August. So you can remotely, um, through your phone, kind of uh, unlock and unlock. And then it also has Aldron on it, so it sends out these notifications of the events onto the system. And we'll see that the system will react to that. Uh, we have a higher AC unit and Aldrin as well, so it can, you know, it's a higher AC unit, so it can cool and heat and everything like that. Um, we have these lights. So these are lights from, from LifeX, and uh, they, they support Wi Fi as well, and we can remotely control them. And then finally, we have uh, these all play speakers. So, I'm not sure if you guys talked about all play a little bit, but these are all play speakers. So uh, the first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock the, the door and what you'll see is that uh, it's going to send out an Aldroid event onto the system and then these devices will listen to it and react. And so the light will light up, uh, the speaker will say welcome home, and it's going to turn on the AC as well. So let's see that. <clears throat> Alright, so here we go. Uh, so I'm going to open up the application. and. Uh, Unlock the door. You'll see that. Did I turn on the Welcome speaker? home. So you'll see that it, it, it unlocked. Uh, that light went up, and then the speaker said, "Welcome home" to welcome me home. And then it also commanded this AC unit to turn on. And when that happened, this AC unit actually sent out an event, and we programmed this light to, to go blue. And so the whole, the whole point here is that. Um, that these devices didn't know anything about each other. They just came onto the network and we sent out these events and we programmed the system as a, as a user, we programmed the system to react the way that we want. So that's kind of a, uh, when, you know, when we come home, it welcomes home. And we can just do the opposite here. So we can imagine if we're leaving the house, uh, we want to lock the door, we want the lights to go dim, and we want the AC unit to go off. So let's uh, lock the lock. Second. There we go. Um, and then similarly, the, the light went dim as you saw it. It commanded the AC unit to go off and the lights went back to white. One thing I forgot to mention is that we have this talk watch here. It also supports all join. And so these devices are all sending these, these text notifications. And uh, actually there's only one that's hooked up to this network. I think it's uh, this one here. And so it actually sent out these, these text notifications that were displayed on, on the talk watch. So, so that's the demo on that side. The other thing that we have here is a, uh, a, a, a uh, it's called the air ball. It detects air quality. It's made by higher, and it also has all joint. And similarly, when it detects that the air quality is good or bad, it's going to send out an event, and these devices are going to react. So let's see what happens. So I'm just going to uh, put this pencil on here to block the airflow, and it's going to simulate that the air quality is bad. Bad air quality detected. AC has been turned on to improve the air quality. So there you saw that it detected that the air quality went bad, and uh, it set up an event, and we programmed the speakers to, hey, to say that, hey, the, the air quality is bad. The light over here is flashing yellow, and uh, you know, again, we programmed that to go yellow. We could have done any other color. And then also, the AC unit turned on because the air quality is bad. So hey, let's, let's add some airflow. So now I'm just going to take remove the pencil, and the opposite should happen. Uh, it takes a few seconds for it to detect that the airflow is bad, and then it's going to send out the event as well. Air quality is good. good. AC has been turned off. So again, we have the speakers, we have the lights, we have the AC unit, and the speaker as well. And then also the notifications. So I think one of you guys had the talk watch, you would have felt the vibration. So, so guys, before we move to the second set of demos, I think just I want to make a few key points. So you heard from Electrolux, you heard from Monster, you heard from the Qualcomm folks, some key points about Alternate. Right? And what you're actually seeing here is the realization of that. These are products, these are real products that will be commercially available to consumers. They're from different manufacturers that didn't have to work together in advance. They're all running all join and that allows you to bring these together similar to the way you do it in a real home. 
if I go, you know, if I as a consumer go out and I buy something and I bring it home, it just now plugs in, discovers, and connects with other devices. So when you heard Jan talking about being able to leverage the resources of other devices, that's exactly what you're seeing here. That air monitor doesn't have a speaker, and the manufacturer is not going to put a speaker in that air monitor. But by leveraging the power of the all scene speakers that are part of the ecosystem, it now has a voice. It can now interact with me. It can now be more valuable. It can present different user experiences that before weren't possible. And that's really the power of what all join brings. So you're seeing interaction with technology towards the humans, and that's being done through the notifications that you see on the television, on the talk watch. Your machines are essentially talking to you, they're texting you, they're, they're SMSing you and letting you know what's going on. But you're also seeing now the machines communicating, leveraging resources of one another and sharing with one another. So it's, it's very powerful and it's the realization of all of the things that people were talking to. You're actually seeing this stuff work in real products from real manufacturers. So kind of keep that as, in mind as you go through and you'll see some other scenarios um, where these same things are happening. Events are being sent, devices are responding to them automatically, notifications are being sent. Um, one device will leverage the capabilities of another device. That's when we think these kind of unique and delightful experiences will happen. And that's what will, will drive consumers at the end of the day to bring more of these devices into their home. All right, so then if we can shift our attention to this side of the room. The speaker, let me just turn them on. Um, similarly, we also have LifeX bulbs uh, installed into these wall sconces here. And we have a uh, higher washer use as well. And so I'm just going to show you some, some more interactions that can occur. Um, I had a little issue with these earlier, let's just hope that it works. But essentially, when when the door opens, it's going to send out an event just like the other systems. And we've uh, programmed the lights to react and the, the speakers to, to react as well. Open the, the door. cooler door is open. It tells us that the wine cooler door is open. You saw that the lights are flashing. These are all things that the consumer programs themselves. We could program different colors, but we went with orange. Hi, my wine is getting bad. And then, hey, you know, the, the door's been open for about 10 seconds. It tells me, hey, the, the wine's bad, so I might as well close the door here. And so the whole point of this is to show you that um, you can be really creative, right? You don't have to be kind of boring and just, you know, flashlights, whatever, you can add a lot of personality, you can have different voices as well. So, so Wayne just said it, the key word there, personality. And, and it, it's really important, right? How we interact with technology and how technology interacts with us is very personal, right? And so we're not talking about, about things here where devices are just some stale computer, your laundry is done, but actually the same way that people um, in the 90s, personalize their phones with ringtones and, and things like that. The, the environment that I live in, I want it to react to me in a way that's important to me. I want it to be my environment and personal. So some of the things that we're showing you, this is a real differentiator, right? This is, you can bring personality to devices. They can leverage the resources to others and they can act, interact with me in a way that's meaningful to me. And Wayne's going to show you some examples of, of just some fun different things that we've thought of that uh, manufacturers are going to come do some more creative things. So I'm just going to go ahead and start the, the washer. It takes about a minute for it to go through its test cycle. And when it finishes, it's going to send out an event, and some of these devices are going to react. Um, so while, while that's going, um, just a little bit more about the personalization. So um, what you're going to see here is, is it, when the event occurs, when the washer is done, the light's going to flash a little bit. And we're going to have a little bit of, of, of fun here with, with the audio. Um, I programmed one of them and I'll show you what other audios that we could have used. So, probably another 30 more seconds here. Um, want to add? So yeah, we'll, we'll wait for that, that cycle to finish and, and, and send its, its uh, notifications. Um, we do a lot of thinking and brainstorming and, and how you can create these kind of creative and personalized experiences to engage the consumer um, um, with the technology. Um, whether it be the kids encouraging them to, 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 to brush their teeth in the morning and, and have the technology talk to them and interact with them in a way that's meaningful and exciting and fun for kids. Um, you, you can imagine consumers getting excited and assigning different personalities to different, different devices, different voices. Washer is done. Don't forget to put your clothes in the dryer. So that one's really boring. Um, and we, we have a few a little bit more exciting ones, and I'll just share that with you right here. Um, instead of waiting in a minute, I'll just play it. 
And so perhaps we uh, want to be a little bit more, the interruption. A little bit more formal. The right? is done, and you'll no, not, not so rude. Um, or maybe uh, we want to have a little fun with the kids. Laundry's done. Yippee! Time to go tumble. Wee! And then hopefully you guys know that Balkan are from San Diego, and there's a lot of uh, dude you're out there. Dead. Now go get your clothes, bro. So that's just an example of again personalities, right? It, it doesn't have to be boring. Okay. So I think that's all that we had here in the kitchen. We just have one more in the bedroom over here. And we could just shift our attention this way. All right, here, here's just the last one. So um, up on the wall, you, we have a, a smart plug. And so it's Wi-Fi enabled. And essentially, you can plug in anything to it. And then over Wi-Fi through Aldrin, of course, we can turn it on and off. And we have it connected to a humidifier. What you're going to see is um, when the smart plug turns on, uh, the humidifier is going to go on. And the teddy bear actually is all drone enabled. And it's going to say something like, good evening, and the lights are going to dim. So let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> and so this is an example of how you can take kind of a, a dumb device and, and make it a little bit smarter. So um, the humidifier turned on because it's connected to the smart plug and the lights went dim and then the teddy bear said something. And so again, just more examples of different types of interaction. It doesn't have to be just appliances. It could be toys. Um, it could be any, any, any something as dumb as a humidifier that you plug into a, a smart plug. Because this is, a, this is a really powerful demo. I think one of the things that you heard Liag say when she was speaking is, you know, you can take devices that maybe you don't think have any relation to one another, and you can take a light bulb and you can take a speaker, and they can do things together. Here you just saw a humidifier, right, a small smart plug, and a child's toy. And I'm pretty sure if you came into the room, didn't have any idea what was going on, you would say, how are these things related? And most of us would probably say they're not. And we'd probably say, ah, oh, there's, how would these interact? Why would you want that? Um, but what you just saw is three different devices, totally unrelated, delivering an experience. You can imagine if you're a child, that's kind of a magical thing, right? Oh, in the morning, your, your, your room comes to life and your teddy bear greets you. So here's three completely different devices. These are the types of experience that we believe when the developer ecosystem starts to really take off, there's going to be a lot of developers that are looking at all of these devices and all these capabilities and saying, how can I leverage those capabilities from the TV, from the speaker, from the smart plug, you know, from the refrigerator, and take those things and combine them in unique and different and creative ways and deliver experiences. And it's going to be amazing the types of things that can happen. Very similar to the way that our smartphones, when they became smart, all of a sudden there were hundreds of thousands of applications and everybody had to have a smartphone because there was an app for something that they wanted to do. That happened because developers saw the power of having those resources and writing applications. The same thing is gonna happen on our connected home. All of these devices, because of Alljoin, are gonna be presented as resources on the network and developers are gonna come in and find extremely creative ways, things that we haven't even yet thought of, <coughs> combining the capabilities of all these different devices that today seem completely different, unconnected, and unrelated, and they're going to take that and just create these magical experiences. And it's, it, This is a great example of how powerful that can be with a teddy bear, a humidifier, and a smart plug. And look how cool that is for a child. So it's going to be fun. Can I uh, add one more thing as well? Um, you know, the, uh, the teddy bear, this is not actually a production teddy bear. This is Wayne, Wayne's teddy bear with something inside of it. But um, I think it's uh, one of the important things. I mean, we're, we're, at the end of the day, Qualcomm is also a hardware company. How many of you actually carry a hardware module in your pocket? Probably not many, but so I'm, I'm speaking as a true aficionado. But so much of the, the buzz in the industry is about how the hardware moves forward. And we love that, right? But as we have moved from uh, essentially embedded devices, you know, gadgets that were like islands in themselves, they moved in about you know, five, six, seven years ago to have smarts. We, we all talked about how these things are getting smarter. What's that, what's that big difference? That big difference is the, the processing got cheap enough to actually put 32-bit microprocessors into embedded devices. We didn't call them embedded devices anymore. We called them smart things. Okay? What's happened recently? Well, things have moved forward even further, where in addition to that processing being cheap enough, you now have connectivity that's cheap enough. Right? 
whether it's Wi-Fi or Ethernet or even Zigbee, Bluetooth, etc. And so, in some sense, we've now said, okay, these aren't smart things. This is not the uh, devices in the internet of everything. So that's great, but that's just hardware, literally but hardware. And it's not going to be a, a networking, uh, you know, a link layer technology. Let's say, you know, the actual way you plug something in in the air or not that is the common language. You need something above that to actually uh, allow for programmers to build these devices that actually have this kind of common language. But I think what, why I mentioned the teddy bear for the very beginning is it is not that far in the future you will see a 32-bit microprocessor with Wi-Fi connectivity built into a teddy bear. It's coming up in light bulbs that you're going to be buying you know, this year. And so if you, if you just follow Moore's Law, you'll, you'll see that. That's great, but then how will that teddy bear talk to everything else? No pun intended, right? So this this uh, this vision we're showing here, of course, there's devices like uh, devices like this Panasonic device or the higher devices, which you'll be able to buy, you know, later this year or, or right now. But even the teddy bear, you know, you will be able to buy a Internet of uh, Toys, or maybe that's what the T stands for, uh, in the very near future. And but yet. That's just the hardware element. So what's the software element? What's the, what's the common language? And again, really reiterating uh, that, that it's not just about what, we're, what the gadgets we're buying today, but how the experiences we're going to unlock even two years from now.